helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Canadian Certified Counselor and Award-Winning Psychotherapist. I want to thank you for being with us on this episode of the Life Transformation Show. Today's show is titled, Adult Daughters of Controlling Fathers. This will be the first part of a three-part series. Have you ever wondered what effect the controlling behaviors of fathers have on their adult daughters? As we will see in this series, the effect depends on the personality of the daughter and the type of relationship with the father. This show today will look at the effect on the daughter who is the father's favorite. In the other parts of this series, we will look at the effect on the rebellious daughter and also the effect on the passive daughter. So there are three types of daughters in these relationships. Again, the favorite, the one who is the favorite, the one who is rebellious, and the one who is passive. So the type of effect depends on the type of daughter and the ensuing relationship with the father, the family dynamics that exist in that family. This series will also provide a very detailed description of what to do if you are a daughter in a controlling father-daughter relationship. As you will see from this series, this type of relationship can have severe mental health consequences on the daughters who find themselves in these relationships, resulting in mental illnesses, low self-esteem, and sometimes even suicidality. But before we go further today, I want to remind you how to get in touch with us. If you are new to Elam Counseling Ministry, you can find out more by going to our website, elamcounselingministry.com. Elam is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry. Dot com. We are a not-for-profit organization that provides Christian counseling or co- professional counseling from a Christian perspective. You can also call us at one 204 2914 So maybe you are a daughter in a relationship with a father that the relationship just doesn't feel quite right, and you're not quite sure if this would qualify as a controlling relationship. With this in mind, let us look at what may be considered controlling behaviors by a father. Let me say right off the bat that it is quite normal for fathers to be involved in their adult daughter's life. But here are a few of the behaviors that show that a father's involvement has become controlling and manipulative. And this this does not mean this is the entire list, but here are some of the things that you could find in a controlling relationship. And in, in a nutshell, controlling fathers manipulate daughters' feelings using guilt, shaming, or withdrawal of love. They foster emotional dependence on the father and do not encourage self-autonomy. Behaviors in these types of relationships may include a father who decides on the course of study that his daughter should embark in. This is not a discussion. This is not a dialogue about possibilities. But no, this is what I want you to do. And the daughter in such a relationship often feel that she has no choice. In another example would be fathers who make decisions on major purchases, such as the buying of a house or the buying of a car. And let me say that giving advice in this situation is quite normal because as fathers, we have more life experiences and we can point out Uh, flaws in certain types of purchases. But this is not what I am talking about here. I am talking about fathers who decide that I like this kind of car, so you have to buy this kind of car. And if the daughter decides that her purchase is to be something different, then the father will be upset 
with her. And another another uh, example or another thing that we find in these kinds of relationships is that fathers will get angry if the daughter doesn't go along with their suggestions or disagree with his point of views, even on topics that are controversial. And these fathers will punish their daughters by stonewalling them if they do not follow his rules. And by stonewalling, for those of you who are not familiar with the sound, I'm talking about fathers who withdraw their love who stop speaking with the daughter and just become become estranged if the daughter disagrees or does not go along with what he wants. We often find that in these types of relationship, if the if the daughter is married, there is a a, a competition that goes on with the husband for the daughter's time. So the daughter's the daughter will be guilted into spending more and more time with the father. And if she doesn't, she will doesn't spend the time that the father wants her to spend with him. She will feel it. She will feel it in the withdrawal of love. She will feel it in the sarcastic comments. And these are just manipulative manipulative tactics that is intended that are intended to make her do what he wants and in these kinds of relationship we will find that the, the father will make uh, overt threats or veiled threats of for example not coming to the daughter's wedding if things are not done his way so there is a story that is told it's 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 maybe some sort of joke it may not be a real story but it captures the essence of what i mean so there's this dad that you know told his daughter that he was giving her ten thousand dollars as part of to cover some of the cost of her wedding and she was very elated but he said well this ten thousand dollars that i'm giving you you know i want you to make sure that there is a bar at your wedding and this daughter did not want there to be a bar but he said you have to have a bar because i drink and so even though all the other guests uh did not necessarily want there to be an alcoholic bar the condition was that there has to be a bar. And then the other condition was that you have to have it at this venue at this hotel because this is where I like to stay. So then the 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 uh, uh, another uh, few thousands of that amount was taken up with having the wedding at the hotel that the father wanted. And there were just more and more conditions added to this so that there wasn't really a gift involved because most of it was centered around what did what the father wanted. This might be an extreme example and it may be uh just a, a, a made up story, but it captures the essence that people, the fathers who are controlling, will give gifts with lots of strings attached to it. So if you can identify with any of these examples, and there are many more uh, examples like that, but for the, the, in light of the time we have today those are all we can go through so you may be you may have other examples that show that you are in a controlling relationship but the essence as i have said before is that you will feel manipulated you will feel that you have been guilted into doing things as a daughter you will feel shaming you will feel the father's withdrawal of his love and even the threatened withdrawal of his financial support if he's giving you financial support in some way if you do not adhere to what he wants. And again, the idea behind these actions is to foster emotional dependence on the father, not for the daughter to develop self-autonomy. So we see an example of a controlling father in the biblical narrative found in Genesis chapter 29 through 31. And it's a story of Laban and his two adult daughters. In Genesis chapter 29, verse 22 to 28, Laban took over Rachel's wedding to Jacob. 
And what ended up happening there is that the wedding that was supposed to be Rachel's wedding became Leah's wedding. How would you like that for family drama? You think that you're getting married and it's going to be your wedding. And on your wedding day, your father steps in and say, by the way, let me just tell you, you're not going to get married to Jacob. It's not you it's not you're going to be your wedding today. It's going to be your sister's wedding. Your sister is the one that's going to get married to to Jacob because she is the older. I can just uh, imagine what Rachel felt like. But this is the kind of extreme control that Laban had over his adult daughters. He took over Rachel's wedding and gave it to Leah. But we also see that this kind of control that Laban had resulted in the daughters becoming bitter. In Genesis 30, 31 verse 14, the woman uh, Leah and Rachel reported feeling used, feeling alienated and manipulated by their father. And they, 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 sided with Jacob in fleeing their father's home to go to a foreign country because of how badly they were treated. And we get insight into Laban's heart in Genesis 31 verse 43 when Laban, in a discussion with Jacob as Jacob was trying to flee uh, secretively without, without Laban knowing that he was leaving, when Laban caught up with him and was talking to to Jacob about why he was running away. And, and it should be obvious why Jacob was running away. The family dynamic was awful. He was being used by his father-in-law. He was work, been worked like a slave. And the father-in-law intention was to use him. So now he's running away and he's with his wives and his children and his vast possessions because God had blessed Jacob and he was now a wealthy man. And uh, he had many camels in, in those days. Camels in those days was like luxury cars today. And Jacob had many camels and things and flocks. And so he is wealthy and he's fleeing. And what Laban said to him when he caught up with him gives us a picture of what's in Laban's heart and the extent of his control. Laban said, everything that you own is mine. Your daughter, your your wives belong to me, and even their children are my children. So, in other words, what Laban is saying, I am in total control of everything, Jacob. I can take everything that you own away from you. But God had warned Laban in a dream that he was not to do anything evil to Jacob, and it, and and Laban, in his own words, said. I could harm you, but God warned me not to. So in other words, we're seeing this controlling evil man that felt like he had total rights over everything that his daughters own. And so there is this extreme form of control in that family. So now let's talk about the, 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 the first of the three kinds of daughters who are in these kinds of relationship. The daughter who is the favorite. The daughter who is the favorite in, in, in that kind of father-daughter controlling relationship usually is fulfilling the void that exists in the father's marriage. Usually in these marriage, the relationship between the controlling father and the mother is non-existent. There's not a deep relationship. And so that void is been filled by the daughter. And so so the, 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 the favorite becomes like the spousified child, where the father confides in the spousified child. And it usually results of a lack of closeness. In the story of Laban, one of the things that we notice is that in the previous chapters, in Genesis, before Jacob flees to his uncle Laban, Jacob had a controlling mother who was dominant in his household. And we heard so much about Rebekah. 
But when it comes to the story of Laban, not a mention is made about his wife. It is as if the author is trying to tell us that this woman is so controlled and the relationship is so non-existent that she's not even worthy of mention in the story. Laban took over that that section of Genesis and it's all about him and his needs and, and what he's doing. And the, the author cleverly uses these, these literary, literary plots to make us realize how controlling Laban was. He's so controlling that he's taken over his daughter's wedding and his wife has no voice, not even a mention of his wife. So there's usually a lack of closeness and the daughter who is the favorite has been used to fill that void. Because the father conf- confides in her about his marital difficulties, usually in these kinds of relationship, she feels responsible to keep her father happy at a, at a very early age. This usually starts in childhood, where the father will start telling the daughters, the, the favorite daughter about how about all the flaws of her mother and how he's hurting in the relationship. And so the daughter begins to see the mother as evil and begin to take the side of the father. And so she is so thoroughly brainwashed by the time she becomes an adult daughter that her father can do no wrong. The blatant wrongs of the father, the evil of the father will be minimized and the flaws of the mother, even though they might be significantly minor things, will be maximized in the eyes of the daughter who is the favorite of a controlling father. Michael will be right back. You have been listening to the Life Transformation Show where award-winning psychotherapist Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services has been using the scripture from Genesis 29 to 31 to speak on the topic, Adult Daughters of Controlling Fathers. You can find out more about us at elimcounselingministry.com where you can also make a donation to this Christ-centered ministry. Your donations help us to stay on the air and to provide subsidized counseling to those who can't afford it. Back to Michael. So the daughter finds herself competing with her mother and competing with other siblings for her father's approval. And as I said before, this starts early, very early in life. And so there is usually not this closeness of relationship with her siblings because the other siblings are usually hurting because of this favoritism that they see playing out in the relationship. And the mother may make desperate efforts to connect with that child who is the favorite of the controlling father, but to no avail because she's so manipulated from a very young girl and she's so controlled from a young girl that she cannot see the virtues of the mother. If you are a mother in that type of relationship, you are in tremendous emotional pain. You're at a loss to understand why is it that you cannot bond with your daughter. But I'm telling you what's going on today. It is because of the brainwashing that has gone on for many years and your daughter is going to be is going to be taking out the anger that she has towards her father at you because you are a safer target she knows that she cannot be angry at her father because if she does he will withdraw his love and his attention and she's desperately in in need of that because he has conditioned her to depend on his love. 
So she's angry at her mother for her shortcomings and failures. But her father can do no wrong. The manipulation to demonize her mother probably started early in life, as I have said before. And so the daughters are not able to see their blind spots. And so let's talk now about these daughters in romantic relationships. In romantic relationships, the favorite will be dominant, just as her father will is is dominant in the household. We said Laban was so dominant in the in his household that the wife is not mentioned at all. These women who are favorite of the father in controlling relationship, they become dominant women as well. They become controlling and manipulative as well in romantic relationships. Rebecca was an example of that kind of a woman. And it's not surprising because Rebecca and Laban are brothers and sisters. And and so they have the same father. And so Laban, sister Rebecca, we see how controlling and manipulative she was in her relationship where she lied and deceived Isaac into into blessing Jacob when Isaac intended to bless to bless Esau and so this manipulation shows gives us a picture of what the childhood of Rebecca must have been like so these women grow up to be dominant controlling and manipulative women in romantic relationship and let's talk now about the, the, the parenting of these women. As parents, the favorite will also play favorites with her children. Just as in the story of Rebecca and, and her children, where we see that Rebecca had her favorite, where, where Jacob was her favorite. So we, we see that this is a family philosophy. And she was most likely a favorite herself. We don't know much. The Bible doesn't tell us much about her childhood. But we can just imagine that her dominance must have come from what she observed in her household. And the favoritism usually runs in generation. Because we see this throughout the Bible and also in in, in, in families that I counsel, that favoritism usually runs for several generations. So we can bet that Rebecca was some kind of a favorite. So women who are, who are from controlling fathers who were treated as the favorite, they also will begin to play favorite when they have their children. And this will create a lot of havoc in relationships. In the story of Rebecca and Isaac and Rebecca and their two children, Esau and Jacob, we see the havoc that this wreaked. That because of Rebecca's manipulation and control, the family was literally split apart. Esau wanted to kill Jacob. Jacob had to run away to stay with her brother, his uncle Laban. And the the, the, the two men uh the, the father and son, Jacob and Isaac, never spoke again in Scripture as far as what is recorded in the Bible. And so this family is split apart. And even Rebecca suffered because she died without ever seeing her beloved son, Jacob, again because of her controlling and manipulation. So it's just a warning here that when you have these family dynamics where there is manipulation and control, it doesn't end in a nice way. It breaks families apart. And even though that father who is controlling might be thinking he's doing things the right way. He's actually harming the daughter and he's creating a cycle for her that's going to harm her children and he's going to leave her alienated and alone later on in life. This is what happened with Rebecca in, in the book of Genesis. So as parents, they will play favorite with their children. And this is this creates a lot of a lot of uh, problems as we see before. But another thing that we will find we find in women who were the favorites of their father is that they don't have a very strong bond with females. 
And so they, they, they have a propensity for male relationships. And this may lead to conflict in, in, in marriage later on in life because these women will have a lot of male friends because they grow up literally being the friend of their father. And so they know how to relate to men in, 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 in a friendship kind of way. And this can lead to problems in marriage, as I have said before. But this can also create uh, situations uh, that lead to sexual encounters with men because of that lack of boundaries that's created with their father. Their father didn't demonstrate for them that they have an ability to control their boundary, to control their space. So they usually have difficulty navigating that in their in their relationship with the opposite sex. So many of these women end up in relationships where where there's a lack of boundary and where sometimes they they may be involved in promiscuity or they may be even raped because of that lack of boundary. So another thing that we notice with these women is that they're arrogant, like, the, like their father. The favorite of the controlling father is opinionated and expect others to comply without question. So if you are a spouse of a woman who is a favorite of a controlling father, then you might find that to survive in that kind of relationship, you will have to be passive and uh, and do not voice your opinion and uh, just go along for the sake of peace. And so these women will appear very prideful in appearance and disposition, but this is just what's showing on the outside. In, on the inside of these women hides a very fragile ego caused by their lack of their own identity and the dominance of their father and the void of female bonding. So these women in organizations usually have problems with female authority. They bond better, they, they deal better on the male leadership and so they have difficulty relating to other women because of the void created in their development as at a young age. So these women are usually very suspect of female authority. And so when it comes to the mental health of these women, they are not happy inside. There are problems in relationship and, and there might be personality disorders uh, such as narcissism or personality disorders such as borderline personality disorder. And so the, the effect that their father has has created a lack of chaos. So there you have it, the first of the three kind of daughters. Next week, we will talk about the other two kind of daughters, the rebellious daughter and the passive daughter. And in the third part of this series, as I have said before, we will talk about what to do if you're a daughter in such a re relationship. So I want to thank you so much for being with us on this episode of the Life Transformation Show. And want to remind you that you can contact us or learn more about us by going to our website, elimcounselingministry.com. Elim is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. Or you can call us at 1-877-204-2914. We are more than a radio broadcast. We provide, we provide professional counseling on a host of mental health and couple-related issues. You can also listen to podcasts like this on our YouTube channel, which you can access by just typing Elim Counseling Services in YouTube. So until next time, this is your host, Michael Art of Elim Counseling Services. Thanking you so much for being with us on this episode of the Life Transformation Show and pray that God would bless you in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart.